Whoa. What? Huh? Okay. Um. Strawberry. Uh, pout. Sweet. Um, boop. Peace. Hop. Doki doki. Uh, fun. Clumsy. Hair. Mm, pink. Mm. Wonderful. S mm, running out of happy things. Candy. Uh, ribbon. Oh, which is um lucky chair hurt pure bliss family another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Joko. Ah, hi Yuri. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's Yuri's expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Um. Yuri glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Natsuki is reading a manga at a desk, and surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me to the corner of the room. About yesterday, I, I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before, and something just came over me. I guess I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri, I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple of days, I can tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided that there's no way you can be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Uh, hey, Galactic. Good. How about you? <laughs> ah. Choco. Don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad you're such an understanding person and I'm really glad that you joined this club everything is a little bit brighter with you around and ah sorry what am I saying right now I just hey have you guys seen Monica Ah. No, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man, Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either. Yuri is clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. <laughs> Monica's best girl, by the way. Uh. 
is she? <laughs> She's kind of sus. <laughs> No, I haven't. Jeez. This isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Um. Not gay. About yesterday. I just wanted to apologize. I promise, I didn't mean any of the things I said. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So... Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? Eh? <laughs> Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? But... Whoa. Whoa. Okay. That mouth. Whoa. Okay. Um, calm down, Natsuki. I'll accept your apology anyway if it helps you feel better about it. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear since I was always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't hate you. Aw, thanks for following, Galactic. Well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Natsuki turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Hey. Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super l sorry. There you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Ah, thanks, Galactic. Enjoy your day. Nah. Well, Natsuki was. I was not. <laughs> what took you so long anyway? Ah. Uh, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard all the bells ring, at least. I must not have heard it, since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good yet. Still, that must require a lot of dedication. So, I'm still impressed. Ah, thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. <laughs> That's... Monica looks at me. Well... I'm working on writing a song. But it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case... I won't let you down, Choco. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah. I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> Don't worry. 
I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not, not really. I choose not to bring up anything that the three of us talked about. Besides, Natsuki has already run off into the closet. Tioko, um, since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you would like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. I suppose so. I don't think I could say no to you after you gave that book to me. Well, I guess I need to make sure Natsuki isn't waiting for me. After we finished reading yesterday, she... She's fine. She's reading over there, see? Don't think about her so much. She's used to being ignored. Come on. We're going over there. What's the story about anyway? Well, hmm. I looked at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There is an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. And the people trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. But the faculty gets even worse. And they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs. And then fixing them too. Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. But anyway, I'm really into it. The fuck I mean. Not the thing about the limbs. That's kind of... Yuri, we need to talk. Now. It's kind of dark. Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so the dark turn came from nowhere. Ah. Are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Joko? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah. I totally forgot that Yuri's into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that this kind of story, it's the kind that challenges you to look at life from a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people, and we're all worthless anyway. Okay, Yuri. I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, my ho Oh, I didn't get to read that, Yuri. But I'm guessing I'm not supposed to know. <laughs> 
I kind of forget to pay attention to other people, so I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please, stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. That's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Yes. I mean, you don't have to, but... <laughs> what are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put in my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. I'm not... Uh, that I don't want you to. It's just... Something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well... Just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about the reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulders as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting. But the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. S sorry. I was just bathing it. Oh my god. <laughs> that went quick. Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I do. I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk onto it's up against Yuri's. Then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah. I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so I instead use my right hand to open the book. Hold open the book to be exact. Um, ah, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn the page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready to turn the page? Ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient. If it takes you a bit longer, it's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, thanks. We continue reading. 
Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Eh? No, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Really? I was just thinking that the way she second guesses things she says and all that. Ah, that's what you were talking about. Sorry. I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? Never mind. We didn't even get that far yet. So, I don't know why that came into my head. <laughs> Yuri, are you feeling alright? Eh? Yuri's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuri puts her hands on her chest as if to feel her heartbeat. I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. Alright, don't push yourself. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out the classroom. What on earth was that about? Choco? Did something happen just now? Eh? I have no idea. Yuri was acting a little strange, I guess. So, you don't know anything? Sorry, I can't say I do. Are you worried about her? Oh, no, not really. I was just making sure that you didn't do anything to her. N nothing <laughs> Don't worry. I believe you, silly. Yuri just does this sometimes, so it's nothing alarming. All right. If you say so. Anyway. Why don't we start with sharing our poems with each other? Eh? Shouldn't we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I just figured we get started without her. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. Hmm. Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. And then again, if this one was as good as your last one, I would be completely pissed. Well, I guess I wanted to try something a little different this time. Fair enough. You're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. I mean, everyone in the club writes really differently from each other. Maybe you'll find a little influence from all of us. For instance, I noticed that you were spending some time with Yuri today. Not that I care who you spend your time with. After all, I was taught never to expect anything from anybody. So, it's not like I was waiting for you or anything. Still, you should at least look over my poem. You'll probably be able to learn something from it. I'm sorry, uh, your poem is unreadable. 
to me. Thank you, Bearded Knight, for the biddies. Hey, how's it going, Bearded? Choco, why didn't you come read with me today? I was waiting for you. Just stopping by and paying for some of the love. <laughs> oh, thanks for stopping by, Bearded. I hope if you're streaming today, it goes well. <laughs> I was waiting for a long time. It was the only thing I had to look forward to today. Oh, cyberpunk. <laughs> I hope your stream goes glitch free. <laughs> it was the only thing I had to look forward to today. Why did you ruin it? Do you like Yuri more? I think you're better off not associating with her. Are you listening to me? Yuri is a sick freak. That should be obvious by now. So just play with me instead. Okay? You don't hate me, Choco, do you? What is going on with your face? Yeah, I haven't had any glitches or crashes. Not on my <laughs> sexy PC. The consoles have been having a rough time. Yes, I've heard um, people's body parts have been clipping through clothing and uh, NPCs magically disappearing. <laughs> A lot of people are getting pretty angry about it on console. Do you hate me? Do you want to make me go home crying? The club is the only place I feel safe. Don't ruin that for me. Don't ruin it. Please. Stop talking to Yuri. Play with me instead. It's all I have. Play with me. Play with me. Um. Oh. Um. I think Natsuki died. <laughs> I, I I think she died. My bad. <laughs> Hi again, Choco. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You'll never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. Great job, Choco. I was going... Ooh, in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way it always counts when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Sometimes I feel like Yuri's mind is just totally detached from reality. I don't mean that like it's a bad thing though, but sometimes I get the impression that she's just totally given up on people. She spends so much time in her own head, 
that it's probably a much more interesting place for her. But that's why she gets so happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she's used to being indulged like that. She must be really starved for social interaction, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly. Like earlier, I think if she gets too stimulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for alone time. Suddenly the door opens. Yuri! I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we all started sharing our poems with each other. Yeah? Already? I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. We still have plenty of time, so I'm more glad that you took all the time you needed. Alright. Thanks, Monica. I suppose I should go get my poem now. But anyway, you want to read my poem now. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. Um... The colors, they won't. Bright. Beautiful. Oh, I think you forgot a few letters there. Colors. Flashing. Extending. Piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cophony of meaningless noise. Monica, are you okay? The noise, it won't stop. Violent grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Tangent, like playing a chalkboard on a run table, like playing a knife on a breathing rib cage. Monica, delete her. I'm going to pretend I didn't see that. Okay. Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'm just trying to, um, well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Mm hmm Got that. You never know when, um, who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything? Please help me. Okay. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Who should I show my poem to next? Yuri. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri smiles and takes a deep breath. I like just holding it. Ah, I mean, the poem turned out good. It's, uh, well, there are some things that you could work on, but that doesn't really matter. It feels like anything written by you is a treasure. <laughs> that came out a little awkward. Let's move on. Here's the poem I wrote. You don't have to like it or anything. Oh dear, that is a long poem. Um, get that. A rotating wheel turning on axle, grinding bolt head, 
linear gearbox falling sky seven holy stakes a docked ship a portal to another world a thin tied to a thick rope a harness gearbox expanding universe time controlled by slipping cogwheels existence of god swimming with open water in all directions drowning a prayer written in blood a prayer written in time devouring snakes with human eyes a thread connecting all living human eyes this is slightly disturbing already <laughs> um yeah no um a kaleidoscope of holy stakes exponential gearbox a sky of exploding stars god disproving the existence of god a wheel rotating in six dimensions 40 gears and a ticking clock a clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet a clock that ticks 40 times every time it ticks every second time a bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a dock ship to another world a kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks a time devouring prayer connecting a sky of 40 gears and open human eyes in all directions breathing gearbox breathing bolt head breathing ship breathing portal breathing snakes breathing god breathing blood breathing holy stakes breathing human eyes breathing time breathing prayer bre breathing sky breathing that is stain on the paper What are these? Those are stains on the paper. <laughs> it doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately. So I had to take it out on your pen. Ah. That is, a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping, and I, um, I just really like the way that it writes. Thanks for the follow, Ren. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? So, I wrote this poem with it. And now you're touching it. <laughs> I'm okay. What did I just... Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem, though. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? A dream. I was wandering an abandoned warehouse at night. I was lost. Looking for an exit, I just wanted to go home. I came upon a huge empty room, its ceiling and walls beyond the deep blackness. My steps were quick in order to hurry to the other side, or to a wall, anything. Suddenly, the ground was no longer beneath my feet. I stepped into a hole of in yeah, in uh, indeterminate width. I fell for a good five seconds before crashing into warm water. 
figuring out which way was up. I surfaced myself. The air was humid, and the sounds of my splashing reverberated endlessly. My vision was completely swallowed by the dark. With one hand, I could feel the damp metal wall of the container. My lungs were already getting tired. So someone's drowning? Okay. Okay, every- Whoa! Why is my cursor say Yuri? Um... Okay. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today. So, if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Di didn't she just die? Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. <sighs> Don't we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. Well... We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since Choco. Joined and we started with some club activities. But this isn't the time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members. And the festival is our only real chance to find more. You know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Natsuki, I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? The literature club should be a place where people can express themselves so that they can can't do anywhere else. It should be a place so intimate that you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard and put something together for the festival, even if it's something small. Right, Choco? Um, oh, come on. You can't take advantage of Choco to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica, do you really think any of us here join the club with other people in mind? Yuri never even talked until Choco joined. As for me, I just like it better here than I do at home. And Choco isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who's so interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're president and all, but you should really consider our opinions for once. Monica is clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. That's, that's not true at all. I'm sure Yuri and Choco want to get more members too, right? I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would probably be lying. Still, if it's up to me to rescue the situation, um, no. Natsuki's right. Isn't she? This club. It's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way as I did? 
but that doesn't mean that we're against getting new members or anything. Choco, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point in all of this, anyway? What if starting this club was a mistake? Now you've done it, Natsuki. What? Me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all. I just... I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't... There aren't many other places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me? She's... <laughs> She's not taking anything away. No, Choco. It's not the same. It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I could have just joined any other stupid club. But this one? I mean, at least for a little bit of time. Things were nice. Natsuki starts packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Natsuki. Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out of the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about that obnoxious brat? I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now. And I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. Um... Okay, that happened. Um, I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decision that's right for the club. But what about you, Choco? What do you want to get out of this club? Yuri repeats the same question as Monica. I decide giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along. And for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making the Literature Club special. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. Something dripping from her eyes? Um. With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. So, if you would like to help Monica with a the festival, then I'm on your side as well. Alright. Well, maybe we can all talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Yuri nods. 
Hey, Yuri? Uh -huh. Um, I know things were a little awkward yesterday. But I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president. And also a wonderful friend. Monica. I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever. Okay? Me too. Yeah. Let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay. I look forward to it. Shall we go, Joko? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but... I'm going to chat a little bit with Joko before we leave. Just to see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. Yuri looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow! Monica waves as Yuri exits the classroom. Phew. Things have been a little bit hectic lately, haven't they? Choco, I just wanted to make sure you're enjoying your time at this club. I would really hate to see you unhappy. I feel kind of like I'm responsible for that as president. And I really do care about you, you know? I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. With how mean Natsuki is and everything. And Yuri being a little bit, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you and I are the only real people here. You know what I mean. But it's weird because in all the time you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. Ah, I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple of days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. There are just some things I've been hoping to talk about with you. Things I know only you can understand. So that's why... Wait, not yet. No, stop it. Back to the poems. Um... Uh, peace. Marriage. Uh, awesome. This is going to be a terrible poem. Uh, color. Okay. Pink. Whistle. Loud. Okay. Uh, sugar. Skirt. Covet. Anime. Those are the numbers on the top. Um. Play. Mm, heart. Promise. Rose. Existence. Uh, prayer. Bubbles. Milk. Valentine. Hi, Choco. I've been waiting for you. Are you ready to continue reading? I brought my best tea today. Monica! I told you not to- Ugh. He really late again. Inconsiderate as usual, Natsuki. 
excuse me? Must you always interrupt my conversations with your insistent yelling? What are you talking about? You say that like I do it on a regular basis or something. I just wasn't. Give me two. <clears throat> Natsuki was about to sound like Yuri. I just wasn't paying attention, okay? I'm sorry. Seriously. What's gotten into you lately? Look. I did some thinking about yesterday. I was a little more hostile than I meant to be. I guess I really felt threatened or something. But I know this is something we're doing together. Another new member wouldn't hurt as long as they're cool. And I guess another girl would be nice this time. So... Natsuki, nobody cares. Why don't you go look for some coins under the vending machine or something? Well, damn. Aw, oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of Determination. Starting this club and still trying to make time for piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. It motivates me to work hard for the festival too. Anyway, Choco, what do you want to do today? I was thinking we could... <clears throat> we are ready have plans today. Ah, is that so, Yuri? That's correct. Choco is already engaged in a novel that we're reading together. Aren't you glad? I've already gotten him into literature, Monica. I... I suppose... I was just... Actually, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. You guys can do whatever you want. Yes, um, thank you for understanding, Monica. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thank you very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention, for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri. <laughs> Yuri hands you the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay. May I have the water pitcher? Thanks. I'll be right back. Ah, uh, I might as well walk with you. Th that's okay. You stay here. It won't take long. Picture in hand, Yuri hurries out the classroom. Ah. Uh, did Yuri leave you again? No, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. 
Ten minutes pass. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. Is something holding her up? I'm bored just waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Let's see. The most logical place for Yuri to be would be the nearest water fountain. I started heading down the hallway. What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. A sharp inhale, like someone is sucking the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri? Yeah. What? What? Uh, huh? I. Okay. Um. We're gonna pretend that didn't happen. I'm back. Thanks for waiting patiently. Choco, do you like oolong tea? Ah, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now, it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed? I was doing a bit of thinking. And I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. In turn, it's out. It's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around anyway. Ah, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Joko. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watched Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Choco, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall better than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder what that, why that is. It's most likely because my, uh, my... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes, I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieve the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. 
Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup? Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hands that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now, I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chaotic wrapper. Ah, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, that's... That's okay. I won't take any. Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? <laughs>